we're at that dangerous time where my stomach may start to be louder than my voice. So work with me. <clears throat> I'm Laura Guyman, and today we are going to take a deep dive into an electrolysis system and really focus in on the proton exchange membrane, or also known as the polymer electrolyte membrane, so the PEM, as we call it. Um, I've heard a lot as I've been sitting here listening to other presentations, um, thinking about these large systems. In some cases, a system that's in a container, a module, or some of these systems are as large as an acre in size. Um, but we really are going to focus all the way in to the membrane, which can be and is thinner than your human hair. So the very tiny, tiny area that we at Gore focus on. So I am here representing Gore's clean energy business. Um, I'm proud to say that I've been an associate for 17 years, uh, 10 years working in clean energy. And um, I get to represent our thousands of engineers. In some cases, we even have multi-generational engineers within our enterprise. Um, we like to refer to, our, to ourselves as an enterprise because we think of that as an action word. And um, within our uh, group of very talented associates in clean energy, we have a very singular focus on material science and taking our unique material set and finding ways to decarbonize the planet with those. <clears throat> so as I said, we're going to really focus in on a polymer electrolyte and more specifically, really three of the challenges that we um, know that our customers and the marketplace face when trying to adopt this technology. And I've heard a lot of people use the word efficiency. Um, in our case, when we think about efficiency, we're thinking about affordability, and we're thinking about the use of energy in an efficient manner, and also the output of hydrogen in the highest output that we can achieve. So efficiency, we're going to spend a fair amount of time on um, scalability. So, we feel like we're in a unique place to represent scalability and ramp up in this industry. Um, we have been doing this, this membrane technology for almost 30 years now. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about where we are in scale. And then system integration and collaboration. So we would not be where we are today without the partnership of our customers um, of other unique partners in the industry and we feel it's critical that we understand how our little part gets integrated with these other systems. So as I said, affordability um, is the key for us in efficiency. <clears throat> so, so this graph um, which was provided to us through a simulation done by NREL um, really represents kind of the two challenging vectors that investors face of capital expenditures and operating expenditures. So this is really focusing in on the operating expense of a system. Um, not at all to minimize the capital expenditure, but I will say that we are hearing from our customers that as they adopt this technology, um, they are learning more about how to reduce those capital equipment costs. They're learning how to make them less complex. They're learning how to streamline them. And we really do believe that, that scale and time is going to help those costs to come down. Um, on the operating side, however, what this graph really is meant to depict is that for just a year's operation, so you see this red dotted line at about 2,500 hours of operation. And that would be a year's worth of operating an electrolyzer using solar energy as the renewable source. So at that point, you can see the green in the graph begins to take over, really. 
and that energy cost begins to be the most significant thing in running the, the electrolyzer. And as you see, that doesn't stop over time. Over time, as that system runs out to 8,000, 15,000 hours, that energy cost doesn't go away. It continues to be the dominant force in what it costs to run the system. So um, that is where we are focusing in on. <clears throat> So you might think, um, in producing a membrane, how can you affect that? Like how, how gore can you affect that energy dilemma? Um, how can you affect the output and cost of that hydrogen? So when we're designing a membrane, our engineers are really thinking about three vectors that they have um, some control over, frankly. Um, performance or efficiency of that. And again, when we talk about that, we're thinking about how well do we conduct that proton. We want to reduce the resistance, and we want to make sure that that proton is conducted as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, so you might think, well, why don't you just do that? Like, why worry about anything else um, but moving that energy? Um, but then we have to be concerned about the lifetime of the system. How long will that thin little membrane last? And then that membrane is also, um, it's a conductant, but it's also an insulator in a lot of ways. So we don't want hydrogen crossing over into the oxygen stream. And that's called hydrogen crossover, and that can be a safety hazard. So we have to balance all three of these aspects. We can't go charging down one area without thinking about the other two as well. Um, but we believe we are at the point where we're ready to, to do that, to address that. <clears throat> so here, this graph is building. Um, so here we are. We have a new proton exchange membrane that we've just come out with. It's an 80 micron product. Um, again, a hair follicle about 80 microns, so thinner than that. Um, and this membrane, when we begin to test it and look at it in systems, we believe it can offer a 5% greater voltage efficiency. So again, um, higher proton conductance, reduced resistance, um, equals more efficient, and a uh, better way, we think, to produce um, hydrogen. So what about those other two areas that I said were so important um, to the overall system? <clears throat> So also, um, with this membrane, we are addressing the safety and durability aspects. I first want to say that in the durability um, area, this is where um, gore shines. Our membranes are reinforced with an EPTFE, um, what I call a scaffolding, really. It is what we build the product on and it allows us to produce a very, very durable product. This new product has two times the mechanical durability of what else is out there on the marketplace. And on the safety side, um, this material allows our customers to have a larger operating window with less fear of hydrogen crossover. So here we're showing less than 2% hydrogen crossover into the oxygen stream. And this is just some evidence that was provided to us by one of our partners. ITM is one of our partners working with our membrane. Um, this shows that over the use of in their system and their testing, this shows out to 9,000 hours. However, it's now been on test around 15,000 hours, um, that there is very little voltage decay. So again, allowing that system to run consistently um, without fear of safety issues and with durability. Here I wanted to point out that we know not all systems run in the same manner. Um, we know that oftentimes use cases are very different. 
Um, in this case, the energy source is wind instead of solar. And in this case, um, first off, looking at the graph kind of in the middle, we can show a 3% efficiency gain um, in this graph. And then also, that 3% efficiency gain means 24 cents in reduction in hydrogen cost on the far side. So again, a better utilization of that energy. So I just, I just want to close this efficiency topic with the fact that we have um, levers, if you will, that we can draw on to improve that efficiency. Um, we think we have just uh, hit the tip of the iceberg as to what's possible. So with ionomer, with additive, in the case of, uh, as I said, crossover, we're using an additive to address that. And then uniquely suited to bore is the reinforcement that we use um, to make that membrane stronger. So we think we have um, the right ingredients uh, to make the most uh, durable and lasting product. Um, I wanted to touch on here about supply chain and reliability of the supply chain. And um, I should go back for a minute, but uh, there's a reason why we put those um, material and moving uh, equipment. We need to go fast. We recognize that the industry is changing rapidly um, and that we need to change with it and address those changes. Um, here I have collected the um, projection for how this industry is going to grow. And you might look at this and say, my, <laughs> this graph is kind of all over the place. Um, same steep curve of growth, but lots of different opinions as to how the industry is going to grow and where the growth is going to take place and when. Um, the when is key for all of us. And You'll notice that in some cases, we've got the same reporting body reporting one year saying, this is how it's going to go, and then the next year saying, no, it looks a little more like this to us today. It's getting pushed out a bit. Um, I'm not showing this really to emphasize that. The reason I'm showing this is to say, we all have different perspectives about what is going to happen, and we all have kind of um, a, a unique position for us, we are at the very early onset of the industry, and we have to be, since we're at the front end of the supply chain, we have to be ready when the industry is ready. And so for us, it's key that we understand this information. And so we continue to kind of push the envelope with our customers and with industry experts about what is actually going to happen, um, what can we count on. Um, fortunately, we are jumping ahead of um, where we need to be, and we have invested early. So we have capacity and a supply chain that is in place today. We have a reliable um, partners that we deal with, and we also <clears throat> are doing it at scale. So you may know Gore from the fuel cell um, part of the clean energy business of of all of the commercial vehicles that have been launched by Toyota and by Hyundai, by Honda, um, in the case of Panasonic, it's combined heat and power systems. All of those systems have used GORE membranes. And so we feel we already have a leg up and knowledge about how to get there in electrolysis, how to provide consistent roll-to-roll -roll material um, that will give a consistent operating equipment down the road for our customers. And lastly, um, I wanted to talk about collaboration because I just threw out some pretty big names in Toyota and Hyundai. Um, I only am able to do that because we are partnered with companies like that and they are allowing us to talk about that. But um, it's significant in that we have learned from each other. And um, we can only be successful if we continue to do that in electrolysis. An energy system does not work um, by itself, and nor does a membrane. It's a small component, as I mentioned. And we have to have um, the support 
and the collaboration of partners. And um, you know, we recognize that these complex systems, we, we don't have all the knowledge. So you know, we depend on those partners to help us learn. <clears throat> I'm out of time, but <clears throat> apparently I get a few extra minutes because there was a cancellation, so one moment. <laughs> so we are looking to the future and believe that we do have um, the right tools in our toolbox to unlock some very unique electrolysis systems, and we look forward to being able to work with all of you um, to make those a reality. <clears throat> I also um, would be remiss if I did not mention that GORE is the type of enterprise that always takes a very long-term view. So we've been working at this for a very long time, and we w are not the type of organization that takes shortcuts. And so if you work with us, you need to understand that, that we will do our due diligence and testing and understand what we're putting in the marketplace before it gets out into the field. <clears throat> and we do that with a watchful eye of what is good for now and what is good for the future. So again, these are some of the points I tried to make in my presentation. Um, efficiency is king. You know, we want to be able to produce more hydrogen at the lowest cost possible and use energy wisely. Um, we want to be able to collaborate with you all to do that, and we have systems in place, um, capacity in place today to do that. So thank you, and you can download this presentation um, on the app or on your computer. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>